Meet Tiffany Ayalik, a young Inuk woman from the Northwest Territories. Each week, Tiffany will meet people from the North who bring land-based living into their everyday lives. Homesteaders, indigenous elders, outdoor adventurers, and everyone in between. I'm Tiffany Eilich, and this is Wild Kitchen. Here I am on the beautiful Kakiza River in the Northwest Territories, and I'm so excited to meet our guest today, Lawrence Nayali. He's bringing his family with him, and uh, we're going to see how he passes on some traditional hunting knowledge to his two young sons. And uh, there's a slight chill in the air. Summer is just coming to a close, but there's a beautiful freshness all around, and uh, the smell of berries is around, so I'm, I'm hoping we'll be able to get some berries. But uh, just in case I see a critter that uh, might look tasty, I have my bow and arrow, and I think I should take a couple of practice shots just to get the rust off the old shoulders. Okay, feeling all warmed up, so let's go see what I can find. Lawrence is joined by his wife, Liz, and their two young sons, Lawson and Tavian. Lawrence grew up in the community of Wrigley on the shore of the Mackenzie River. The Kakiza River is one of his favorite fall camping spots to bring his family. Hey! I arrived Hello, just in time Hi. to help put up the teepee. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Hi, Liz, nice to meet you. Hey, Lawrence. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. So you ready? Yeah, but throw me in. What are we doing? Okay, we're going to lift this up. Okay, where me would you, you like me? I need you on this pole. Okay. Okay, so we're going to lift it slowly. All right. And Liz, can you come over here and just watch yourself? We're going to try to stand it up, all three of us. Awesome. So slow. Okay. Try to dig it into the ground if you can, the poles. Okay, just make sure it's grounded. Oop. There's no sliding like that. I need you to dig it into the ground. Okay. Okay? Okay, now push up slowly. All together. Okay. Right up. Okay, now Liz. Yeah, there we oh, go. I had a girl. Okay. All right. The teepee up in the north. I remember my, my grandma sharing stories that her great grandma had told her and the teepees were a traditional way of making a homestead up here or making a community. Going to the gym in the bush. <laughs> Membership is free. <laughs> So before canvas, Lawrence, what would the tent be made of? Um, it would be made out of caribou hides, moose hide. Okay. When the dogs were up here, they would pack the dogs with the meat and with the materials, and then people would just go to a certain area and unload all of their hides and then get their teepees ready. Um, when the fur traders came up and the canvas was introduced, that old-fashioned way of setting up teepees were considered obsolete, I guess. They were no longer needed. This much more lighter material was really good for them. So um, I think that transition happened in the late or middle 1800s. Liz, can you help us? Push it. Push it real hard. There we go. How many people does it take to set up a teepee? <laughs> More than three. More than three. <laughs> oh, it looks so cool in here. It was so satisfying to put the whole canvas all the way around and actually go inside of it. And to see how all of the poles are pushing against each other and supporting each other in a way, putting up the teepee was really challenging. The tent is almost ready. We all work to collect spruce boughs to line the teepee floor. 
So our rug looks amazing and the smell yeah. in here is incredible. It's nice. It's like a giant air freshener everywhere on the ground. But my arms are sore. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, at least we got it out. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's make a fire. Okay. And while this is going, we'll make pemmican and then uh, boil up some tea. Awesome. And if we set up this tent right, it should go out this big gigantic hole. <laughs> Liz teaches me the traditional way of making pemmican, which consists of dry moose meat, fat, and raspberries. Yeah, my grandma would um, have, I think she said it was a stomach that it was in, that's what she would keep it in. Oh. And the outside was like fur. Oh, wow. Like mm -hmm. a stomach lining in Yeah, and, and then, then the fur on, on the outside, outside. yeah. Pemmican, I think, you know, it's a type of food that uh, kept the Dene going. And it was high in protein, the fat that you collect from the harvest that you mixed in with the pemmican. It built up a lot of nutrients. It's like um, the power bar of the north. Did you want to try? Sure, yeah. Just keep looking at it, and then you just gather it, and then just keep pounding it down. I've heard lots of hikers and lots of campers talking about pemmican and how it's such an incredible source of protein and nutrients and calories. And to be actually able to make it and pound it, it was very, um, it was like traveling back in time, you know, using, using the tools that would have been available and uh, seeing the meat, especially the dry meat, transform from such a tough texture into this beautiful powder was really incredible. We finished the pemmican by mixing in the fat and the raspberries. And then you would get it all stuck. And then that would be like... We call in Tavian and Lawson after a long day to enjoy this bedtime snack. Come on in here. And we're gonna try some of the pemmican we made. You know what that is? So, grandma, my grandma, your great grandma, used to pound, this is dry meat. Look what we did to it. We pounded it up. We mixed it with some of the caribou fat, and we made these little nuggets. And you're gonna try it. I really like it. Okay. This is the pemmican. Oh, yummy. It's got this beautiful sort of sweetness that's very subtle from the raspberries. And uh, there's a like a pate, almost like richness from the from the moose fat. Oh, this is so delicious! This is good good food after a hard day of putting up this teepee. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for um, walking me through pemmican, and it was nice to be able to, you know, hear stories about your grandmother and and you know your elders and how how you guys did it. Well, guys, I'm going to leave you to your wonderful teepee here, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. All right. Thank you. Sounds good. <laughs> Take one for the road. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mm. It's it, it's it. Mm. So good. Mm. Sunsets on the Kakiza River, on one of the most picturesque campsites imaginable. early in the morning and uh, we're on a gravel road and I really want to go look for some grouse. Spruce grouse are a great source of protein and are often found on the forest edge in the cooler fall temperatures. Now uh, the grouse inside their stomach they have a little pouch and they like to eat little pebbles and that helps them to sort of break down all the twigs and uh, all the foliage that they eat so if we're gonna find any I think here on this gravel road will be a good place to start. be a better hunter than I was, but I think I'm on the right track. And that doesn't look like it's been there that long. I think maybe this is a good place to sort of head in and uh, see if see if there's anybody else left in there.
Ooh, there's some, uh, there's some scat here. Oh, well, we know that they're somewhere. Found some scat and found some feathers. At one point or another, there were grouse here, but uh, not having any luck so far. So I think I will uh, choose to go vegetarian today. <laughs> at least until something else is found. And uh, I'm gonna go check up on Lawrence and his family and see how they're doing with the fish. My contribution might just have to be berries and mushrooms today for Sunday dinner. <laughs> good morning, Lawrence. Hey, good morning. How's it going? Good. Just making the fire for uh, our ground oven here. Well, I tried. I got up early this morning and uh, tried to look for some grouse, but I got some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you? So we'll have to uh, we'll have to rely on fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool bow and arrow. Yeah. Okay, Tiffany with her bow and arrow was a surprise for me. I've never seen that, but her actually going out and trying this out was really cool. So can I give you a hand? Yeah. So we're just about to get it started, but. Can't get it started like that, so we need to look for either birch bark okay. or tape e this uh old old man's beard is old man's beard, it. yeah. Yeah, so that would be good. Okay. Here's some birch. So I'm just gonna take just a little bit that's already kind of coming off. You don't want to get too aggressive when you're peeling the bark or else it leaves the, the tree susceptible to uh, infection and bacteria because this is it's skin, so we're just gonna exfoliate a little bit here. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, Lawson. What are you doing? We're gonna make a fire. Remember how to make a fire? No. No? How do we keep our culture strong within the family is by going out in the land and exposing them to cultural events. Awesome. Hey, I want you to put it right there. Okay, go close. Wait. There's always something that's culturally uh, active within the smaller communities. That's where we're going to cook the fish? Yeah, As it's still simmering, it's, it's got to die down quite a bit. And then we'll put the grassy leaves on top, and then if we can catch a fish, we'll lay it on top. Awesome. So we're preheating the oven yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is like a ground oven. And after we're done that, we'll put the fish down on it, and then uh, we'll put some more green leaves on the top and then we'll stick this dirt on top of it and just let it, and it'll be like camouflage. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Yeah. Well, what do we need next there, Lawson? What do we need? I think we need to go get a fish. Should we go fishing? All right. All right <laughs> did you bring your lucky lure? I think he did, yeah. I really yeah. enjoy stuff like this. Me and my son try to go out as much as we can. There's, there's classroom learning and then there's on the land learning, hey? Yeah. And it, it totally yeah. has a different feel and different schedule and... I gotta teach him how to make a lean-to, how to make a fire, set snares, yeah. uh, how to prepare fish and meat. Well, we're having no luck here. Yeah, should we go check out another spot then? Yeah, I think in town I, I'll get to, we'll try that. Okay. Down by the docks, it should be good. We head up the road to Kakiza, a small Dene community of less than 100 residents. And wouldn't you know it, I catch a northern pike on my first cast. Be nice if we got a pickerel and Whoa. a jack. Oh, the whole holy. Yeah, just wear them right out. Put him to the shore. Pull him up to that board. And we gotta knock him out. All we have to do is knock him out. So what are we going to put on this fish, Lawrence? We're going to find some juniper berries and stick it inside. Uh -huh. These remind me of my mom whenever me and my sister would have uh, colds and she'd you know, put this in hot water and, and we'd kind of like steam with it. Oh yeah. To help uh, with our asthma and breathing issues. Oh, they smell great. Strong, eh? I've never had um, these with uh, 
with fish before. I'm, I'm excited to try this. How do you say fish in your language, Lawrence? Uh, xie. 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 And uh, what dialect is that? Uh, it's it's the South Slavey dialect. Okay. We use a lot of pH, so it's similar with the Shuta Gotne. Shuta Gotne. Yeah. The, the mountain Dene use a lot of pHs, and a lot of our people were from the mountainous areas. Mm -hmm. Language is important to me because it's tied to not only my identity, but it's a, a tool that I connect myself with the land. Uh, a lot of the elders that we still have with us today don't speak English. They just speak Dene or Tlinchon or Inuvelaktan, whatever it is. I think language is a, a crucial element of a community, any community and how we receive knowledge. Ever had fish like this before? No. Me neither. Cool. Hey, now the moment of truth. What's that? Let's see. Ooh, this looks heavy. Oh. It is heavy. It's hot too. It is. Oh, there it is. Oh, she's really cooked. Beautiful. Let's take up the meat. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Look at that. And there's our juniper yeah. on the inside. Wow, and that's totally cooked all the way through. It's all the beautiful. way through. Okay, yeah. the smell is amazing. My mouth is watering. I gotta just try a little piece here. Oh, look at that. Meat is just... Mmm, it's amazing. And it totally has um, a very slight, you know, flavor from the juniper in there. And um, I can taste a bit of that clover that mm -hmm. we put on, that uh, was layered on top and underneath. Could I see the berries? Yeah, right here. Get inside his tummy there. Why did you put it there? Just for some extra flavor on the inside. Doesn't get much fresher than that, eh, Lawrence? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I saw quite a few berries that were ripe. There was tons of um, rose hips. I think that I'm gonna try and whip up a little barbecue sauce, and uh, maybe tomorrow we can have a little outdoor barbecue. Mm. How's that? Yeah. Good. Awesome. That's great. Did you guys have a good sleep last night after all that work? Yeah, <laughs> blanket nice and warm. Yeah, I don't know about you, but my arms are pretty tired <laughs> still. <Yeah. laughs> so I tried to get a spruce grouse again this morning, but no luck. I even got up extra early, but Aww. no, they had other plans. <laughs> well, um, but I do have some chicken. I thought that might happen. It's good yeah. to be prepared. <laughs> so I have some chicken. And uh, I'd love it if we could make a barbecue sauce that we talked about last night. Yeah, it sounds um, good. So yeah. let's uh, show me to sounds your yummy. secret berry spot. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh, this is such a great patch. Yeah, there's lots here. And they're just like perfectly ripe. They are, the color's beautiful. It's just been that frost the last couple of days in the evening to just really sort of sweeten them up and mm -hmm. make them ready. How long have you been taking your boys out with your family um, coming out here? Since Austin was small, we always took him camping and brought him out in the land. So it gives Lawrence an opportunity to teach them some of the traditional ways. He's quite gifted with language also. Oh, like yeah. In, in, um, in speaking, you know, slavey. Yeah. Is that, um, is that something that you grew up with? I know some words, but I'm not, I don't speak it like Lawrence. Like it's Lawrence's first language, which is really awesome. But it's nice that I'm around Lawrence and, and you now get, we're, it's you, in the house a lot, so. You're learning to, at the same time as yeah. your children. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, well, I think we've got uh, quite a good haul here. I think we've got yeah. enough to start putting these through the press and I think we can get started on our sauce. Sounds good. Okay, awesome. Okay. I whip up a barbecue sauce using the roast hips as a base. I can't wait to try it. Hey Liz. Hey, it smells great. Yeah, it turned out really well. Mm -hmm. So we'll just get these guys cooking for a little bit and uh, 
Can't wait to taste it. Yeah, it looks good. All right, guys. Oh, look at that. He's I'm just. Oh my there. gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you know that your mommy helped me make this barbecue sauce? We picked the berries early this morning and then we cooked them all up and put it on a giant grouse mm. that has white meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so good. So, um, in my language, in Inunaktun, that I'm still learning, um, when, when you're saying thank you, it's kwana or kwana kuti for thank you very much. Kwana. So how would I say thank you to you guys in your language? It would just be a simple masi. Masi. Yeah, masi cho. Masi big, cho. Big thank you. Big thank you. <laughs> masi cho <laughs> for having me and uh, showing me a little bit more about your culture mm -hmm. and the food that you guys use. And it was just so excited on your day. <laughs> oh. Is it daddy long legs on daddy? Where's <laughs> my little beer there? <laughs> <laughs>